Okay, good morning everyone. Today we'll look at solving radical equations. Uh, we won't worry about inequalities. We'll just look at radical equations. Solving radical equations is really no different than solving equations that you're used to. So for example, if I have 2x plus 4 equals tw 12, let's say here, the first thing you'd want to do is you'd want to subtract 4. You want to isolate the x, so we need to subtract 4. We get 2x is equal to 8, and then we would divide by 2. We would get x is equal to 4. So again, notice here that I isolated the 2x. Okay, we're solving for x. So I need to get the 2x on one side and the numbers on the other side. Well, radicals, um, when we solve radicals, we'll see that if I have something like the square root of 2x plus 4 equals 8, let's just, or let's just keep with the same one, equals 12, make this the same. The square root of 2x plus 4 is equal to 12. What we want to do is we want to isolate the radical. We want to get that by itself first. So we have radical 2x, we subtract 4, and we'll get radical 2x equals 8. Okay, so notice again we're isolating the radical. Always, that's what you want to do. You want to isolate the radical. Get it by itself. Get the radical by itself. And then we'll see what we do to solve that. This um, inverse of taking the square root of something is squaring it. So we'll square both sides. And then we'll get 2x is equal to 64. 8 squared is 64. And then we'll divide by 2 and we'll get x is equal to 32 in this case. But again, what we want to do is we want to isolate the radical, get the radical by itself. All right, so let's just keep that in mind. The rest is easy. A radical equation consists of a variable within a radical. Recall that you can solve quadratic equations by taking the square root of both sides. Similarly, radical equations can be solved by raising both sides to a power. So for example, they give us an example. We have the cube root of x minus 2 equals 0. We want to isolate the radical, so we have to add 2 to both sides. And then we'll get the cube root of x equals 2. And then the inverse of taking the cube root of something is to cube both sides. And so we'll have x is equal to 8. Okay, um, now why does that work? Why does taking the cube root of x raised to the third work for us? Well, again, there's a couple ways you can look at that. So again, remember that... Um, if I have the cube root of x raised all to the third, well, that's just equal to x raised to 3 over 3, or equals to x. So, all right. so let's go on. Okay, for square root, the index of the radical is always 2, remember, 2. All right, so let's look at the, so we're going to solve each equation. Again, I have 5 plus the square root of 1 plus x plus 1 equals 16. I want to isolate the radical. I want to get the radical by its side, so we subtract 5 from both sides. We'll get the square root of x plus 1 equals 11. And then the square root, the inverse of taking a square root of something is to square. So we'll square both sides, and we'll get x plus 1 is equal to 21, x is equal to 120. Again, notice we isolated the radical. Solve each equation. So I have 7 times the cube root of 5x minus 7 equals 84. Again, I want to isolate the radical, the cube root of 5x minus 7. So I divide both sides by 7. 
And now I bias the lead of the radical. So I'm taking the cube root. So the inverse of taking the cube root is to cube each side. So we raise each side to the 3. And then 12 cubed is 178. 1728. So we have 5x minus 7 equals 1728. Add 7. Divide by 5 and we'll get x is equal to 347. Again, isolate the radical. Get it by itself. Let's look at this one. The here. This one here, the radical is already isolated. It's already by itself. So the inverse of taking the cube root of something is just a cube both sides. And then we'll get 3x minus 4 equals 8. Add 4. 3x equals 12. x is equal to 4. Again, notice here, I have the radical, one radical is isolated, it's all by itself, this one isn't. But no need to divide by 3, because if I divide by 3 on both sides, then I'll have, I'll be dividing by 3 on the left. So, so there's nothing to do but now, just because nothing to do but to take both sides and raise it to the second power. The inverse of square, square rooting something is to square it. And so we'll just take both sides and square it. We we'll square both sides. Okay, so again, um, so this radical was isolated, oops, but the other one wasn't. But you'll see if I divided both sides by um, 7x plus 2 if I divide both sides by 3. Okay, 3x minus 2. If I divide both sides by 3, well now I have um, 3 in the denominator for the left one. So it really doesn't do any good. So we just square both sides. Alright, and so, but here we have to remember that we have to square everything. So that which means we have to square 3. 3 squared is 9. And then if I take, um, so the square root of 3x minus 2 squared, well, that just gives me 3x minus 2. So students will always forget you have to square both things. You have to square the 3, and you have to square the square root of 3x minus 9. Don't forget to square the 3, which is 9. All right. Now, we just distribute the 9. We'll get um, 9 times 3x is 27x. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. We'll solve. We'll subtract 7x. And 18, we get 20 equals 20x. X is equal to 1. Let's look at another one. So again, I'm taking the square root. So the inverse of squaring, taking the square root is the square. But don't forget, we have to take 3 squared, and then we have to take the square root of x squared. We have to square both things. Okay, have to square both things. So 3 squared is 9, and the square root of x squared is x. And then I have 8x plus 6 equals 9x. Okay, so subtract 8x, so you get x is equal to 6. Again, don't forget to square the 3. Okay, now this involves rational exponents, okay? So I'm taking the um, 5x plus 7 all raised to the 1 -third. That's really not, no difference than taking the cube root of 5x plus 7. Okay, so the inverse of taking the cube root of something is to cube it. Or if I just cube both sides, 1 third times 3 is 1. So I get the cube root of 5x plus 7 equals 3. Okay, 
And then 3 cubed is 27. And then the, if I take the cube root of 5x plus 7 and cube it, I get 5x plus 7. And then if I solve for x, so subtract 7, divide by 5, and you get x is equal to 4. So again, they just wrote here. They went 5x plus 7 raised to 1 third is equal to the cube root of 5x plus 7, which is what they wrote there. And cube both sides then. Raising each side of an equation to an even power may introduce extraneous solutions. Okay, extraneous solutions. This means you get a solution, but it doesn't make sense. You should always check. So again, so we have 2x is equal to 4x plus 8 raised to the 1 half. So again, that's taking the square root of 4x plus 8. So the taking the inverse of square or taking the square root of something is to square both sides, so we'll square both sides. 2 times 1 half is just 1. All right, so if I take 2 and squared, I get 4. If I take x and squared, I get 4x squared. So 2x squared gives me 4x squared. And then uh, 4x plus 8 raised to the 1 half squared would just give me 4x plus 8. Subtract 4x and subtract 8. Factor out the 4. We get x squared minus x minus 2. Factors of negative 2 that add up to negative 1 would be x minus 2 times x plus 1. So my zeros would be x is equal to 2 or x is equal to negative 1. 2 or negative 1. Now we should check. All right. Well, we have x is equal to negative 1. Well, what's the problem with that? Because if x is negative 1, I will have 2 times negative 1. And that equals negative 2, but over on the other side, I'll have, I'll have 4 times negative 2. Oops, 4 times negative 2 plus 8, all raised to the 1 half, or the square root. And so I'll have negative 8 plus 8 will give me 0, and 0 to the 1 half equals zero so that does not make sense on the left when i substituted i got negative two on the right when i substituted i got zero okay but did i really have to do that no because notice here when i had 4x plus 8 raised to the one half that's the same as the square root of 4x plus 8 and this here, this either has to be 0 or positive. So when I substituted a negative 1 on the left, I got negative 2. But this has to be either 0 or positive. So, so I knew right away I would not get a solution. But when I substituted a negative 2 either way, you see... I got zero. So extraneous solution doesn't make sense. All right, let's see here. And so they said, yep. Oh, wait a minute, did I? I substituted and, um, well, it should have been negative one. Hmm? My bad. I substituted a negative 1 on the left. I should have substituted a negative 1 on the right. For some reason, I substituted a negative 2, so that should be negative 1. And that would have been all raised to 1 half. So that would have been 4 raised to 1 half. And so that would be 2. The square root of 4 is 2. So again, it still didn't make sense. Negative 2 does not equal 2.
no solution. All right, um, let's look at one more here then. So solve each equation, x plus 5 raised to the 1 third equals 3. So again, I'm going to, so the inverse of, I'm taking the cube root of something as a cube both sides. So I'll take that and raise it to the third and that raise it to the third. And so that will give me, okay, they just took that though and just, just wrote it as a cube root of x plus 5. And then they cube both sides and we get x plus 5 is equal to 27. x is equal to 22. And I guess um, that will make sense. 22 plus 5 raised to the 1 third. That is 27 raised to the 1 third. That equals 3. And it checks out. The cube root of 27 is 3. And then let's look at how many more of these do we have. All right. Now let's take a look at this one. So again, I have 2x plus 15. I'm going to raise it to the 1 half. So the inverse of taking the square root of something is the square of both sides. And then I'll get 2x plus 15 equals x squared, which is what they did. 2x plus 15 and then x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. And then we factor x minus 5 times x plus 3, so my zeros would be 5 or negative 3. So let's check to see if we have any extraneous solutions. Well, when I plug in 5, okay, that works. So 10 plus 15 is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. And on the right, I have 5. You know, we started with this equation here. So that works. 5 equals 5. But then, when I plug in negative 3, well, let's see here. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, plus 15 is 9. And 9 raised to 1 half is 3. But on the right, x is negative 3, and that does not work. So negative 3 is not a solution. Only 5. Okay, so here, your lesson quiz then is to do 1, 2, 3, and 4. Remember, isolate, isolate the radical when you have to isolate the radical. This one here, number three, okay, you'll be squaring both sides. So don't forget to foil the right. Don't forget to foil the right. And probably with this one here, it would be helpful if you divide both sides by four first. Okay. You'll isolate the radical. x minus 5 raised to the 1 half is the square root of x minus 5. You'll isolate the radical, so divide. But for number 3, make sure you, when you square both sides, you FOIL x plus 2. Okay, so that's a pretty easy lesson today to solve radical equations.